The Chicago Cubs are on a hot streak fueled by Taylor Swift. The Houston Astros sweeping aside the Kansas City Royals in a huge playoff mix-up. And Brandon Ayuk has signed his new contract. He is back with San Francisco+. Plus. We recap week one of college football and our MLB Power Rankings. It's Monday, so that, of course, happening. Happy Labor Day, everybody. Happy Labor Day, indeed. This is Coast to Coast Sports. My name is Levi. Let's talk some 49ers. Brandon Ayuk, the big deal contract that he was looking for, and he was, I think, willing to hold out into the season, um, but I think ultimately they had to get that deal done. He is Brock Purdy's favorite receiver. He's his favorite weapon, um, and probably his best weapon. I mean, Brandon Ayuk... I think it's close between him and Debo Samuel, but last year he was legitimately one of the best receivers in football. Uh, and you look at that, this was year four for him, 25 years old. He went over 1,000 yards, 1342 to be exact. Uh, seven touchdowns, 61 first downs, 75 receptions on 105 targets with a 71.4% catch rate. His yards after catch were very impressive. Brandon Ayuk is a fantastic player. He's a playmaker. Uh, He is. He's a playmaker, and and he's only gotten better. You know, he's only gotten better as the season, as his career has gone on. As a 24-year-old, he he scored eight touchdowns, went for 1,000 yards as well. And I think that they view him right now as their wide receiver one. Debo Samuel is great, but Debo Samuel is a bit older, a bit more injury prone. And I think Brandon Ayuk is going to be their top receiver this year. Brock pretty loves him. And you look at Debo last year, 60 receptions, 892 yards, seven touchdowns. Debo also contributes on the ground, 225 yards and five rushing touchdowns. Debo Samuel, man, he is so good as well, man. I mean, he is, he's a really talented football player. Um, I think combined, they are one of the best receiving duos in the league. And part of that is because of what they can do on the ground. Um, But yeah, I'm all in on the 49ers offense. Now that they have Brandon Ayuk, I do still think they need to get a deal done with Trent Williams, though. Because the dude is a real game changer out there. But I think with Ayuk, Purdy will be comfortable enough. um, I think he'll be comfortable enough out there to get the job done. You can also look at the playoffs. Ayuk last year in the playoffs, he had a nice playoffs. Nine receptions, 149 yards, and a touchdown. Year before that, 109 yards, six receptions. Uh, overall, just the one touchdown in his playoff career, but he has almost 400 career playoff yards. He's at 393 playoff yards. I think Brandon Ayuk, and he, and did he not play last year in the playoffs? Is that is was that what happened? Or no? Okay, he did. Yeah, he did. He played played last year. Yeah. So. Ayuk's a good player, very talented player. They needed to get the deal done. It's $120 million, uh, and I think they are all, I think everybody in the 49ers system, their entire fan base is very happy that they got this deal done. So the Chicago Cubs, I want to talk about this. They've been the hottest team in baseball, 9-1 and one in their last 10 games. They're now five games above 500, 71 and 66. They're trying to get back into that wild card. I don't know if they're going to get back into the wild card. Despite the six-game winning streak, they are still three games back. They could get into there. Um, Again, I would still trust Atlanta, but we got to talk about the Cubs Uh, because this thing has been really, really fun for them. And all of a sudden, they're taking advantage. To be fair, it's been a really easy schedule. They have had a very easy schedule. They're taking advantage of it. This is their August stats. This, actually, let's look at their post-All-Star game stats. Post-All-Star game, Ian Happ has been going off. He's got eight home runs, 20 runs batted in. Seiya Suzuki has an 888 OPS. Dansby Swanson, a 779 OPS. And look at their pitching staff. What's their pitching staff done post-All-Star break? They've been really underratedly good. Um, Shoto Imanaga... 3.47 ERA. And you start to look down the line. Justin Steele at 3.89. Javier Assad at 3.10. Porter Hodge. Porter Hodge out of the pen. A 1.47 bullpen since the All Star break. Jorge Lopez, 0.56. Oh, 
it's tough because Kyle Hendricks is still there, and he's been terrible. He has a 6.68 ERA post All Star break. I I feel bad that they still have to have to deal with that, but um. But yeah, Chicago looks good, and um, the fun story about them is apparently they've been like lighting a Taylor Swift candle in the dugout before games. That is what has fueled their hot streak, according to their manager, at least. And uh, you know what? If it works, it works. Taylor Swift now has influence over the NFL and apparently the MLB as well. Like like I said, I don't think the Cubs are a playoff team. I think it's cool, though, that they've been hot. I I think it definitely makes the NL wildcard more compelling because all of a sudden, what was looking like a two-team race now looks like a three-team race. Here's the article from MSN.com about Craig Council. Um, A Taylor Swift candle that they have been lighting uh, that's how they've been rallying. They won 14-10 after being down 10-3. to They scored 11 runs in the last three innings. That was against the Pirates. Um, the Pirates previously hadn't lost, a, hadn't blown a game like that in 144 times that they had led by seven or more runs. Um, he says, there's a lot of Swifties in Cubs Nation, and there might be some luck coming from those Swifties that have impacted the Cubs. Uh, he was... Craig Council was gifted a Taylor Swift candle, and they've been lighting it before games in his office. Clubhouse manager Danny Muller also takes part in the ceremony. It's been a nice little run, and it has been a nice little run. So they've officially taken over second place in the Central from the Cardinals. And yeah, they're trying to get back into that wild card. They still have a chance at it. I don't know if it's going to happen for them or not, but they have a chance. They're still alive. At this point, I think all of Taylor Swift Nation, at least, is on the side of the Chicago Cubs. Does her star power have enough to get them to the playoffs? That is what we're going to have to see. She helped the Chiefs out, allegedly. She's been drawing up plays for the Chiefs, allegedly. Crazy how much of an impact a musician has on sports, but here we are in 2024. Can Taylor Swift get the Cubs to the playoffs? That is the question on everybody's mind. If they do, she should do like a free concert. Wouldn't that be fun? Like a free concert for all of Chicago in Wrigley, Ooh. or at least at least go out there and sing the national anthem. Maybe if it's a Cubs, ooh, Cubs Phillies, because I think she's a Phillies fan, because she's uh, from somewhere in Pennsylvania. Ooh, wouldn't that be fun? Cubs Phillies in the playoffs, if it happens. Taylor Swift, get her to sing the national anthem. That'd be hype. Bringing it back to baseball, keeping it in the MLB. The Astros have swept the Royals. It's a four-game sweep. Normally, this would hurt the Royals' wildcard chances, except my Mariners have been so bad that it really doesn't matter. Royals still have a four-game lead over Boston for the last wildcard spot. But the Royals, yeah, they were so hot. They, were, they had taken over the lead in the Central. They had beaten Cleveland. And then all of a sudden, uh, now they, are, they got swept by Houston. And now they're currently losing Game 1 to the Guardians. So they have they had a chance to make the AL Central a good race, a tight race, and they've pretty much completely blown it. Um, they are now four and a half games back of Cleveland, having lost six straight. Cleveland, on the other hand, has won five of six. They are now back to 79 and 50. So Cleveland has officially beaten the Royals today. Tough luck for Kansas City, man. They were right there. All of a sudden... Things are starting to get a little hazy. Again, not there yet. Four, they still have four games on Boston. Could Detroit run them down potentially? Let's see. Then I do, they do play Detroit. Detroit's five back. If Detroit could somehow sweep the Royals, maybe they still have a chance. Um, but it was tough for the Royals. I mean, the Royals just really struggled. Houston was dominant. Uh, Jordan Alvarez with his third three home run game of his career. He had a great series. Um, and Houston now, they are back. They're only four games. Look out. Look out, New York. Houston's only four games back of the Yankees. They could still, they could, I'm not saying they will, they could still have a shot at the number one seed. They're four games behind New York. I don't think they will catch New York, but again, they could. Um, New York's been kind of struggling lately, and Houston is hot. 
This sweep helps the Astros a lot. They just about have locked up the West. They, they lead Seattle right now by five and a half games. Tough luck for my Mariners, but the Houston Astros, they just kind of feel inevitable at the point where it's like, I wouldn't bet against them. They won the first game uh, by a score of 6-3. to three. They were down 3-2, and then they scored 4 in the 8th inning to win 6-3. Then on Friday's game, it was again another, of course, Astros victory. Uh, they made it happen on a 3-2 win. They were up 2-0. The Royals tied it 2-2 in the 9th, and then Houston won it in the bottom of the ninth with a walk-off. They walked him off in game two to win three to two. Saturday, Houston wins again, of course. Uh, Saturday's game, five to two. Houston scored f- all five of their runs in the sixth inning. So that gave them a 5-2 win. That was their third straight. And then on Sunday, they win the they complete the sweep as they pretty clearly dominated that one seven to two was the final on Sunday. They might just be inevitable. They might just be inevitable. I would be very interested to see uh, a Houston Astros in the playoffs because I think they can match up pretty much with anybody in the American League. I think they can match up with the Yankees. They can match up, maybe they can match up with Baltimore. They can match up with Cleveland. And now we, they pretty clearly match up with Kansas City. Look out for Houston. Uh, Jordan Walker on the Cardinals, he's had he's been in the news for good reasons. Jordan Walker recently got recalled. He's been played most of the year in AAA. Recently was recalled to the St. Louis Cardinals and just had his first five hit day. The Cardinals are still kicking around for the playoffs. They're six and a half games back of the Braves, so they're not officially out of it yet. They pretty much are. They're a 500 team. They're 69 and 69. They could get back into it. They have a pretty easy schedule going forward, but it's still probably, it's very unlikely. Um, But congratulations to Jordan Walker. He's had a rough second season. He's been very bad this year, um, all things considered. He was pretty good last year as a rookie, but his year two has been a real struggle for him. He's still very young, only 22 years old. So congratulations to him uh, for his first ever five hit. I mean, five hits is hard to do in one game. And he pulled it off. Uh, So I like it. I like it a lot. All right, I want to talk NFL. I've changed my predictions. I know. I know. I've changed my predictions. And I'm allowed to do it because it's still the preseason. I know what you guys are going to say. You're going to say, Levi, you just made these predictions two days ago and you're already going back on them. So the Bills I had winning, I'm now taking the Jets to win. I think this game will be the last win of Aaron Rodgers' playoff career because I think he retires after this season. I also think this will be the last game of Sean McDermott's coaching with the Bills and possibly of his coaching career. I think this loss, losing at home to the Jets in the AFC wildcard round, will be the last straw for Sean McDermott. NFC, I'm keeping it how it is. I like the Packers, Rams, and Lions. Divisional round. Previously, I had Chiefs, Texans. I still have Chiefs, Texans. Over here is where things are different. Previously, I had Packers and Lions. I've changed No longer do I have the Packers beating the Eagles. I have the Eagles beating the Packers. Why? Because I think Sirianni is a better coach than Matt LaFleur, and I think Jalen Hurts is a better quarterback. And I'm worried about Green Bay's rushing game. I don't think, I think without Aaron Jones, they do have Josh Jacobs. They have an aging Josh Jacobs, and they have A.J. Dillon's out for the season. I don't think their run game can support Jordan Love enough and I don't trust Jordan Love enough yet. So I'm taking the Eagles to win that game. After that, I will take the Texans still over the Chiefs. I will take the Lions still. I'm now taking the Lions. The Lions are now my Super Bowl pick for the NFC, and I still have the Texans winning. So I have Texans over Lions is my official preseason Super Bowl prediction. 
If you watch First Things First, I agree with Coach Eric Mangini. That's my take. Texans over Lions. We're going to have a, maybe a full show with Drew later on. All right, very quickly, let's recap some college football. A lot of college football happening last weekend. Um, so, what went on? NC State with the win over WCU. Kansas crushing Lindenwood 48-3. to Missouri 51-0 over Murray State. South, uh, Southern Utah got wiped by Utah. The Big 12 favorites 49-0. Oklahoma winning 51-3 over Temple. Georgia absolutely dog-handled Clemson 34-3. I mean, come on, Clemson. I knew you weren't going to lose. I expected a little bit more fight. Georgia is so clearly the best team right now. Um, Penn State beating West Virginia 34-12. Iowa, 40 to nothing over Illinois State. They're, they started off very slow. They punted, I think, four times in the first half, but they end up scoring 40 on Illinois State. Oklahoma State, 44 to 20 over SD State. Tennessee, 69 to 3 over Chattanooga. Texas with a 52 0 win. Ohio State, 52 to 6. Miami, 41 17. Kansas State, 41 to 6. Alabama, 63 nothing. Ole Miss, 76 nothing. And then the games that people actually cared about. Notre Dame, 23-13 over Texas A&M. Big win for the Irish. Michigan, 30-10 over Fresno State. Arizona, 61-39. That's a high-powered offense. New Mexico, 61-39. Oregon barely beat Idaho, 24-14. And USC with an upset. The only real upset of the week. 27 to 20 USC over LSU. Number 10 Florida State now taking on Boston College. Although Florida State probably shouldn't be number 10 when it's re-ranked cuz they lost last week, if you remember, to Georgia Tech 24-21. So they probably shouldn't be number 10 anymore. Uh but that is the college football recap. Let's go over to the MLB power rankings. All right, it is Monday, which means it is MLB power rankings day. The bottom of the list remains mostly unchanged. Miami moves ahead of Colorado at 28-29, Chicago at 30. So the Marlins and Rockies are battling for who will be the worst team in the National League. Angels 27, still A's 26, the Nationals 25. Pirates dropped two spots. They had a rough week, uh, lost to the Cubs. I think they got swept by the Cubs. They fall from 22 to 24. And I think at this point, it is fair to officially eliminate the Pirates and Reds from playoff contention. They're both 10 games below 500. A miracle run could not save them. Uh, Texas moves up two spots. They swap places with Pittsburgh. They're now 22. They're 7-3 and three in their last 10. Too little, too late. Could they get back to being a 500 team? Maybe they can. It's not going to matter. Uh, the Giants, number 20. They drop three spots. They have been 3-7 and seven in their last 10 games. They're now two games below 500. And again, I'm not ready to do it yet. I'm not going to officially blow out their candle. But they are, at this point, they're far enough back in the wild card that they are effectively done. Uh, and Tampa Bay as well, 67-69, and 3-7 and seven in their last 10. They fall three spots. The Cardinals stay at 18, 5-5 five and five in their last 10. 69 and 69. They are just hanging around 500. And again, if they were going to get hot, they're going to have to do it right now. This is the time. They don't have any more time to waste. They have an easy schedule to finish out the season. Could they make a little run? Could they try to catch Atlanta? Maybe. Uh, Seattle drops two spots from 15th to 17th at one game above 500, 69 and 68. Five and five in their last 10. They're 10 games back of the AL number one seed they are five and a half back of the wild card they are six back of houston for the al west again they have an easy schedule going forward they finish up with some a's some rangers um i think i don't entirely remember who else but i know their schedule is pretty easy but they have to take advantage of it um if they don't get hot soon they will be eliminated for good red Sox also dropping two spots they're now into 16th at 70 and 67, just three above 500. Remember when they were a wild card team? Not anymore. Um, they are three and seven in their last 10 games. 
three, uh, I guess they're four and a half. They're four and a half back of Kansas City. Detroit, welcome to the top 15. Welcome back to the top 15. Detroit moves up four spots. They are now two games above 500, eight and two in their last 10. They've been hot. Again, feels like too little too late for the Detroit Tigers who have really benefited from playing a lot against the White Sox this year, and they have dominated Chicago. I don't think Detroit gets back into the wild card chase. They're five games back of Kansas City right now. They do play the Royals, though, which is something the Red Sox don't get to do. The Royals get the, the Tigers do have a shot at Kansas City. If they sweep the Royals, there's always a chance. So the Tigers are not out of it yet. Uh, they're at number 15. And then the Cubs, the highest climbers of the week, they move up six spots from 20 to 14. They have won six in a row. They have not lost since we did the last power rankings at 71 and 66. Meanwhile, their fellow Chicago team, the White Sox, they haven't won since we did the last power rankings. The White Sox had 31 wins last Monday. They still have 31 wins. The Cubs last Monday had 66 losses, and they still have 66 losses. Chicago, 9-1 in their last 10. They're right now in the wild card. They're only three back of Atlanta. There's a chance there. They actually have a real chance. Chicago Cubs, they could get back into this thing. Um, Kansas City falling five spots. They got swept by Houston. Bad look. They're still in the playoff picture. The teams in bold are in the playoffs. I actually have the Mets as a top 10 team, despite not being a playoff team. I'll explain that in a second. But Kansas City at 13, they fall five spots. Minnesota also dropping two spots. They drop down to 12. So both of these teams were in the top 10 last week. Now they are out of the top 10, and they've been bad. Kansas City 3-7 and seven in their last 10. They still are only somehow three and a half games back of Cleveland. Um, Kansas City playing Cleveland today. Actually, they lost. So Kansas City is now four and a half back of Cleveland after losing today five and a half back of the number one seed. So they still technically have an outside chance of the number one seed if the Yankees crumble and they get hot at the right time. You never know what could happen. But as of now, Kansas City, Minnesota, I don't really believe in either of them in the playoffs anymore after seeing them crumble against good teams. Atlanta at 11. I have Atlanta 11 and New York at 10. And you'd say, well, Atlanta should be ahead because they have a better record. Atlanta has a one-game lead over the Mets right now. And the Mets have been better. The Mets are seven and three in their last ten. Atlanta six and four in their last ten. I think the Mets could catch Atlanta and make it into the playoffs. Um, the Mets right now are tied with Boston, Atlanta today. What have they done? Uh, they do not play today. So the Mets, if they win today, they would be a half a game back. And I think they will. And then starting tomorrow, the Braves get the Rockies. Um, and then after that, though, the weekend series, this was what to watch. Mets, Reds, and the Braves take on the Blue Jays. I think the Mets can catch up. I think the Mets can catch up, and I think they will. So I have them at number 10, jumping three spots. Also jumping three spots, the Astros are back into the top 10. They are now at number 9. Uh, at 75 and 62, they're only four games back now of the New York Yankees, for the number one seed. Six and four in their last 10, and they just swept the Royals, which helps them out. San Diego moves from nine to eight, six and four in their last 10 as well. 78 and 61, they're tied with Arizona as the number one and number two wild cards in the National League. Padres have been good lately. Arizona stays at seven. The rest of the top 10, mostly unchanged. Cleveland stays at six. Baltimore stays at five. Uh, Baltimore is half a game back of New York. Cleveland is a game back. So again, the number one seed in the AL is still wide open between New York, Baltimore, and Cleveland. Houston is still a little bit behind, but the number one seed in the AL, that's, this is not over. Like, the NL, and the NL's not over either, to be fair. Yankees, though, they have dropped to number four. Brewers meant to be three. They're, they're at number three. They move up two spots from five uh, to three. Congratulations to the Milwaukee Brewers at seven and three now uh, in their last 10. 81 and 57. They're only a game and a half back of the Dodgers. The Phillies, they've been doing a good job keeping the pace with the Dodgers. They are meant to be at number two. They move up a spot. 
Um, and then the Dodgers at number one. The Dodgers still, Joe, still though, just a one-game lead over the Phillies. It is very close. So both leagues, it's kind of a three-way race right now for the number one seed. In the, in the National League, it is a three-way race between the Dodgers, Phillies, and Brewers. Padres, Diamondbacks are both five back, kind of on the outside looking in. Um, and then the wild card is between the Mets, Braves, and Cubs for the final spot. In the AL, three-way battle between the Yankees, Orioles, and Guardians for the top seed. Astros pretty clearly locked in right now at number four. And then it is the Twins and Royals who are sitting there in the wild card spots. A lot of teams that are trying to get back into it. Detroit, Boston, Seattle, Tampa. I don't believe particularly in any of those four teams. If, if, if one of them gets in, I would say to, that Detroit chases down the Royals. That would be my prediction. If Detroit can chase down Kansas City, that's the only way that I see uh, a different AL team getting in. Those are my MLB power rankings. This is Coast Coast Sports. We'll see you guys tomorrow.